There are many legends about this story of the wise men from the east. For instance, how many wise men were there? Some believed that there were 12 men who made their journey. But now almost everyone agrees there were three. One old legend even tells us the names of the three, Melchior, Balthasar, Kasper. Yet another legend goes on to tell us that after seeing the baby, the three continued traveling as far as Spain, telling the world the good news about what they had seen. These stories bring the wise men a little more to life and add some color to the meaning of Christmas. However, they can also get in the way. The problem with legends is that sometimes they add color to the stories that does not need any additional color. In fact, sometimes legends are so colorful, they are unbelievable and can end up making the entire story unbelievable as well. I am not out to ban legends, but I do think it might be worthwhile to hear the story one more time the way it was told the first time. It all started sometime after Jesus was born. It might have been a few weeks or even a few years. You remember that when Herod tried to kill the baby later, he murdered every child under the age of two years. Apparently, he was not sure how long it had been either. One thing we do know about the time is that it was dramatic. Every nation in that part of the world was on edge. In historical writings from all over the East, we read that nations shared the belief that it was destined that a tremendous new king was about to arrive, one that would rule the entire world. From throughout the Roman Empire into Armenia, as far as Persia, the people waited for the king's arrival. It is in Persia that we find our story. Some years back, there had been an attempted overthrow of the Persian government by a group of Medes, but the attempt failed. Since they could not destroy the Persians, the Medes joined them. They were a highly educated group and were deeply respected for their understanding of science, religion and astronomy. They were good, holy men and were given the name Magi. They believed that the stars controlled what happened on earth and that if a new king was to be born, the heavens would give a sign. Apparently, it did happen. Just what it was that those early astronomers saw, we don't know. There was a brilliant appearance of Halley's Comet in the year 10 BC and some believe that may have been the sign. There were two tremendously bright times in 7 BC and 3 BC when Saturn, Jupiter and Venus appeared next to each other as one star. Such an occurrence was always believed to be a sign of a king's birth and some believe that is what the Magi saw. Others believe that the star was a one-time appearance of something supernatural. We do not know. All the Bible says is we saw his star and have come. How many came? Were they 12 or three or what? We don't know that either. Scripture never says there were three wise men. They gave three gifts and from that we have supposed there were three gift givers. And I'm not sure where we got the notion that they were kings. It must have come from that hymn, We Three Kings. However, there is another hymn written by Father Dennis Lemos which speaks of the three wise men not as kings but as seekers. I shall put the link down in the description. But first we need to look at this special character of the Christmas story, Herod. Word of the arrival of the kings from the east made quite an impression around Bethlehem. The greatest impression was made upon Herod. He was so impressed that he threw an open house for them as a welcome to Judea party. During the celebration, he pulled them aside and confided in them. He told them that he was even more excited than they were about this new king being born and that he would certainly appreciate it when they found where this new king was, they would send him word 
so he could come and visit or at least send the family some gifts for the baby shower. Herod was an interesting character. He was what we call a complicated individual. He could be compassionate. Back during the famine of 25 BC, he had his own solid gold dinner plate melted down and the money given to the poor. More than once, he refunded taxes to those who were having a hard time getting by. But he also murdered his wife, his mother-in-law and at least three of his own sons. Later in life, when he knew he was about to die, he ordered the arrest of hundred of the most respected residents of Jerusalem and had them imprisoned with the strict order that at the moment of his death, all hundred of the prisoners would be killed. He wanted to be sure people would cry at his funeral. Herod had the potential for good, but was driven by a nightmarish jealousy. If he saw any threat, real or imagined, he did whatever necessary to destroy it. Now, of course, the baby king was a real threat. These wise foreigners would unwittingly help him carry out the necessary destruction. I have always wondered if those wise men really bought his story. Just to be sure they caught on, God filled them in during a dream and they never sent the message to King Herod. They did find the baby and they bowed down and worshipped him. They gave him gifts, they gave him gold, the appropriate gift to give a king. They gave him frankincense, a powerful smelling incense, which was the usual gift given to a priest. They also gave him myrrh. This one may have raised Mary's eyebrows a bit. It was embalming fluid. Myrrh was the spice used to rub the body in final preparation for burial. And then they went home. We really don't know when they came and when they went. We honestly don't know how many they were, but we do know they probably were not kings. We do know that the entire known world was holding its breath, waiting for a new king of the world to be born. We do know that a team of the greatest scholars alive believed that the baby born in the Bethlehem manger was the king of the world. We do know that the famous Herod, the king, also believed that Mary's boy was that new king. The bare facts were enough for all of them to believe that Jesus was the Christ. I pray they are enough for us. What lessons do we learn from this Feast of the Epiphany? First, consider the road of spiritual discernment. As the scripture says, and having been warned in a dream. Dreams are windows to the soul. What if they were also revelations of the future? You will discover in the Bible that Jacob dreamed about a stairway to heaven and upon awaking exclaimed, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Joseph dreamed that his brothers would bow down and worship him. For that he was hated. Pharaoh had a dream which Joseph interpreted that saved the whole country from starvation. Solomon had a dream that the Lord would give him a discerning heart. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, taking his text from the prophet Joel said, The Spirit will be poured out on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. What hopes and dreams dance in your head? What fantasies of a divine kind float through your mind? Of course, our hopes and dreams must be interpreted, tried, tested on the foundations of scripture, tradition and reason. Some dreams are revelations from God. Others are the result of eating a spicy dinner or taking strong painkillers. Second, consider the road of dynamic faith. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. They returned to their country on the road less traveled, without the benefit of a road map, or for that matter, even a road. 
There was no GPS on the noses of the camels. Such is the nature of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, Noah built a boat in the desert that saved his family from the flood. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, Moses chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. The righteous live by faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Sometimes we must turn and take another road in order to find Jesus. Are you ready? Amen. Amen.